Hello my lovelies and we have another video showing you how to create the willow stitch. So I've done a couple of rows just to give you full effect of how it's going to look. Let me just lift up my camera a little bit more for you just to make sure you can see everything nice and clearly. Excuse my little bit of a mess. Right. Yes, I haven't made it Instagram worthy, but I am trying my hardest. So let's just make sure everything's lining up right for you and then we can begin. Righty -o. There we go. Right, so we have our willow pattern which contains nine trebles. And in between those trebles, we have a double crochet. So what we're trying to do at this moment in time is line up these corners, which have proven to be a little bit tricky. So you're going to have to get into the process of modification. So ideally, you want 68 um, half trebles on the row below. If you have one more, it's not an issue. So you may get to the row at the end of each row and have one extra. Maybe. I don't know. I'm giving up at this stage. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. You should have 68 um, stitches on this row. And what we will, what you can do is you can start your standing stitch or your connection in your corner and create 10 um, trebles in your corner. I'm going to frog this back while you're watching to show you exactly what to do in the corner and how many stitches to skip. In this particular row, I have skipped three stitches and there are three stitches at the end that are skipped. OK, you may find the extra one for some reason. I don't know, but it just keeps doing it. So anyway, moving on. I've given up on that bit. When I did it the orig originally, it was absolutely fine. Everything worked perfectly. And for some reason, this particular one is not doing that. So if you hit the same snag as me, which I'm sure you may, you may do, if you don't, brilliant. But generally, you should have about 68 stitches on row. Uh, where are we? <laughs> I've totally forgotten. Um, on this row. So, which is 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So yeah, 68 um, stitches in this row. Oh, this will all be written on the blog, so please don't worry. Um, so we've skipped three stitches. We're going to go in. Right, let's make sure you can see everything. So skip those one, two, three. I know that you can see four posts but we're looking at the stitch heads and we're not counting this one. Okay, so one, two, three, and straight in and create that treble. Now, if you get that pull there, just take it back out again, get back into being comfortable and just pull it down a little bit more. Okay, so one, yarn over, go through your corner space and we're gonna create 10 of these into that space, that's three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okie dokie. So you can create that straight away into the corner as your first row. I probably will be writing it that way as well. Um, and then you need to skip three. So one, two, three. There we go. And then just double crochet. Now we're only going to skip two and we're working to the third stitch from the stitch we've just made. So your pattern will read, skip the first three, one, two, three, skipped, yarn over and then work your first treble into that stitch space. And now you need to create nine of these. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, there we go. Again, do the same again. I've just realised, no, did I say three before? We need to skip two. So we're working to 13. Yeah, that's right. I did say that. I'm just making sure. Okie dokie. Let me just move this light a little bit closer. Um, hang on. Everything's uh, interconnected here. Oh, my apologies. 
just feel like everything's a little bit in shadow so I just want to get a bit more of a, a subtle light on there for you is that a bit better yeah that's much nicer right so now we need to do the same again and we do that by skipping those two stitches so one two into the third chain into the third stitch head and then do the same again and just repeat right what I'm going to do I'm going to pause my video here and then I'm going to come back just before we finish the corner so should we have an extra stitch or a miscount for any particular reason I think it will be really good for you to see four five six seven eight nine um, for you to see so you can see how I work around it okay now the reason why I'm happy to have um, to drop a stitch or to ignore it is because I want these stitches these stitches here in the, oh, in the corner that's my scissors are really really important okay so losing a stitch here and there to gain that is more important to gain that than it is to lose a stitch so sometimes, like I said in the previous video, it's okay to do that, okay? Things aren't always going to line up perfectly. That is just how things are. Sometimes it just happens that way. Sometimes it doesn't happen that way, but sometimes it does. And it's okay. It's okay for it not to be okay, as long as it doesn't affect what we do thereafter too much. So it's a case of deciding what's really, really important and what can we live with and what can we live without now if you're a perfectionist and you, it irritates you that you've got four you're skipping four one side and you're skipping three the other you know i i understand that we need you know it's nice to have that order but i'm just going to say occasionally it's going to happen and i've got to a point with patterns and writing patterns that sometimes you have to learn to modify um and you have to learn to be okay with it and it's not going to affect your make um okay so it's like this keeps curling up as well and just different things but it's all to do with we have multiple textures within our make so don't be over obsessive over things that sometimes you just don't have control of okay don't don't hyper focus on it when the bigger picture is going to be much nicer that's what i'm going to say okay and i know that's probably cutting against the grain when it comes to what other people say but you know what sometimes you just need a little bit of artist interpretation let's put it that way <laughs> okay i'm going to pause here and i'm going to come back in a moment okay so i've completed um this row and i have two stitches spare so what's happening is we're skipping three at the beginning and we are skipping two at the end and it's purely because the um willow stitch is covering basically an odd number of stitches so we are skipping so we have the double crochet which is one we skip two which is three we then place it in number four skip two and then place a double crochet in um, number seven so it, you could say six you could say seven but because of that it's um, because it's covering those seven stitches it means that we have an odd placement of numbers because of it being 68 now if it had been 69 we probably would have had three on either side but no we have 68 just what we needed so because of that we have um we skip three at the beginning and we have skip two at the end and again this will be written into the pattern um so that is how your row will work we'll then work into the corner space which is here Sorry, this is getting bigger now, so trying to get myself comfortable is a little bit difficult. And um, yeah, so we just cover those trebles in that space. So it's 10 in a corner, 9 on the flat. So 4, 5, I have to keep slowing myself down, I'm very sorry. 6. Seven, eight, nine, ten, and you may notice as well when I'm I've 
because I've been watching my videos, I've been looking at the way that I'm working. So you'll find that I never take my hand off my hook ever. Um, when I'm working with it, I manipulate it backwards and forwards, pointing it down, pointing it up so as to anchor and, and you kind of work like that. You may also notice as well that as I am anchoring um, my wool, um, I'm also using my finger to press against the stitch. So for instance, let's skip those first three stitches and I kind of twist my hand back and forward to kind of work a little bit like that. So there's a lot of movement. Even though this hand just holds my wool, I also use it to manipulate my stitches as well. So you pull it through and if you notice, I always push against my finger. I didn't realise I did it until I was looking back through the editing and now I get spotted it. So there's lots of things that happen in you forming your comfortable flow um, in how you hold things. So don't try to do everything at once just because just because I do it, just because someone else does it. It doesn't mean you won't do it in time. Just take your time learning your stitches. Don't worry about all the things making it, trying to make it look this way or look that way. You do this and I do this. And why do your stitches look so neat? You know, all those kind of things. Just get used to doing the stitches. Get used to understand how your hook works for you. Not because Sally down the road does it like that or such and such a knitting class or crochet class or whatever does it that way. Because your handwriting, their handwriting, the way you hold things is completely individual, completely different. So... All we need to do now is work those rows and I will be at the end of that one. So again, um, I will pause here and then we will be working into the next colour, which I think is, where uh, is my bag? I've got such a squeaky chair. That was my chair, by the way. Which is, where are we? That's the back end of my, my, uh, my blanket. So we will be working the deep rose next, um, or the pink in my case, because um, I'm using the alternative colour white, and we'll be working into those. So we're going to be working on those bits and up to here, and then when we get up to here, that'll be the end of chapter two. This will be um, chapter four, and then we've got chapter five, and then we've got our special row. So can you see that little cupcakes, little cherry bakewells? So we'll be working on that. Um, next um, that will be our last row so we've got five chapters all in all and then we've got our border because we're going to take special time making sure we get our border correct um, okay so I will be putting the stitch count on for these rows just so you can make sure that you are getting it correct because um, it, it doesn't take a lot especially when you're joining rows it's probably the end of the row one that you need to be most mindful of because that is the one where you can end up adding stitches when you come to finish in your row. Because you're like, well, do I finish there? Do I put it in there? Where does it go? So it's probably that one you need to count the most just to make sure because it's so easy to add them without thinking. And it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, you still end up doing it. And I don't care who you are or how long you've been doing it. I can guarantee there's always a moment when you have to frog it back. So let's pause it there. I'm going to finish this row and then hopefully we can get this sorted and written up for this tonight because it is Thursday. It is the deadline tonight. So all being well. And if not, it is what it is. You will get it this weekend. Anyway. <laughs> right. OK, my lovelies, we are now back and all of my willows are done and we've got everything in a nice position. Um, so that's good. Good, 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 good. So uh, let me just move things around a little bit because, again, it's getting bigger. You will be using the deep rose. Um, I am using pink on mine. Um, but if you're using the original colorway, it will be deep pink. So where to start? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, here on the double crochet. Um, and we're going to do a... Because we're going to do a front post. Uh, right, let's just bear with me a moment. I have a whole script here of things I'm supposed to be following. But as you know, if you know me, if you've ever met me, <laughs> um, we'll say no more. 
Okay, so we are working in the double, uh, in the deep rows, that's right. And we are working on a front post treble. And so we're not working back post, we're working front post. So we're going to be working a front post uh, half. No, it did say treble, didn't it? That's right. So we're working at the front. So this time, where we went back post before, we need to make sure that this time we go underneath the double crochet and it sits in front. Now you can start your stitch here, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm going to start it here. We're going to take our wool, bring it around, and then what we're going to do is going to go back underneath. So we basically just created a chain or a slip knot around our front post. Go back around, pick up your stitch, and you know like how we've got double crochet looking there. Go back through that bottom loop and then create another one. Go back through that bottom loop, yarn over, go back through it, and there you go. You've got your first treble and you won't even know that it doesn't look like one. So let's do that again. Have a recap because it is a bit fiddly, but I think you will um, prefer the finish for this. I know it's a little bit complex for us at you as a beginner, but honestly, trust me. So go underneath your double crochet. That's the double crochet there sitting on top of my hook. Pick up your yarn and then bring it through, yarn over and then pull your yarn through. So it creates that chain without creating a knot. Go back underneath and just bear with me a moment, I'm going to pause right here again. So yarn underneath your double crochet and then pick up your yarn where you're anchoring and pull through. Yarn over again to create a sort of sl a basic slip knot. Go back underneath your double crochet and then yarn over and pull through and then yarn over and pull through again. Now let's just tighten that up a little bit so we can sew loops. You see that bottom loop again? Go through that bottom loop, pick up your yarn, go through your stitches again. Go through that bottom loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, and that's your treble. Okay, so that's that first part done and dusted. So for the corner, we are going to work. Let me just check my notes. Right, that's it. So we're going to go into this space here. Because remember, our stitch heads are to the right of our post. This is our stitch head here. We have to do this this way. If you don't do this, you're going to miss where your stitches need to be. So half treble into there. Half treble into the next stitch. Then one double crochet. And then two double crochet. So in other words, there's one, two into each stitch head. Then I want you to chain four. And then I want you to skip what would be our slip stitch and go into the second, the, sorry, the third stitch. So we're going to skip two and then go into the third stitch. We're going to create that next double crochet. And then another double crochet in the next stitch. And then another half treble. And then another half treble. And then we're going to work that half post treble. In around the double crochet so yarn over go underneath your double crochet yarn over again and pull through yarn over pull twice and there you go and then we're going to repeat the same again so half treble this time we're working into nine of our trebles in our flat on our edge or flat willows another half treble double crochet, double crochet, and then a slip stitch. Okay, okay. Then we've got double crochet, double crochet, 
and then half treble. So it just basically repeats itself. It, it's, um, it mirrors itself. There we go. You see how that flat line's coming along, along now. Then we're going to work around again our front post treble. Sorry, I'm speeding along. Front post treble, so yarn over underneath your double crochet. Create your three loops, yarn over, go for the first two and then the second two. And you can see how you're getting this lovely flat filled in space. OK, so you just keep repeating that. So so going through that part of the stitch there, half treble. And another half treble into the next stitch, double crochet twice into the next two stitches, slip stitch. So it's just basically that and then pull through. So you're basically not yarning over like you would the double crochet. You're using that first loop and you're just pulling it through the, the remaining loop. So double crochet is yarn over, two loops, yarn over again. Okay. And then half treble, like so. And then obviously your double crochet becomes your front post. So you just do your front post treble like so. And then that's how it's going to work. So I'm going to pause here again uh, and then I'll finish all rows and then we'll come back to the next colour. So just remember that you have nine trebles on your um, your flat willows. So it's two half trebles, two double crochets, one slip stitch. You mirror that. Every double crochet will house a front post treble and when you come to your corner you will do the same. You'll mirror this, um, the two trebles, two, sorry, the two half trebles, the two double crochets, skip two, but in place four chains. And then once you skip those two, you do the same again, two double crochets, two half trebles, and then repeat. It's really simple, this row. It's just a matter of knowing where to put those stitches. So just make sure that you're counting all nine stitches on your flats and the same with the 10, because otherwise it will misplace where things are. So just remember that you're, count, you're working into this um, part of the stitch, this side here. Don't go into there and think that's part of your nine. This is also part of that nine. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. It's really easy to miss it if you're going too fast. It's also really easy to add 10 um, trebles into your willow as well. So if you do, don't worry, just count the nine ignore that extra one that you made you don't need to frog it back unless you want to frog it back it's entirely up to you it won't make much difference because it's not about it's not stretching out you make it's just it's just there as the height so you can kind of go oh just, just ignore that for now it won't hurt but if you feel you want to please do um but don't over obsess over it as i say don't hyper focus unless you need to hyper focus Okay, right, I'm going to pause there. I shall see you back in a moment when this is complete. Repeater style. Okay, so welcome back to the next stage of our rows. And I'm just trying to find where I was. <laughs> um, so I am now working in the Cupid, which will be the Ladybug. Um, so we are now on row, uh, where are we? So... So welcome back. We are now working on row, I've forgotten again. <laughs> so 40, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 23. That's three times I counted it and three times I forgot. So um, let me, I'm all wrapped up here. There we go. So now we are working back in our double crochet. So we've done our pink. Um, which will be the deep rose in the original colourway, and this will be the ladybird, ladybird, ladybird colourway um, in the original. Um, for me, it's pink and cupid, but you are going to be working a double crochet, and you will still be working a post, a front post around the um, front post that we put, created in the previous round. So the way in which this part, this part will work is that you'll work two double crochets and two chains into your corner. You'll then work in one, two, three, four um, double crochets there, and then you'll work in 
around a half double post. Oh, here comes my dog on cue. Um, around the front post there, and then you'll you'll continue the nine stitches that you made before in this area. Front post nine, and then front post. You're exhausted today, aren't you, Todd? You're very breathless. He's been for a big walk today. I have a big husky, so you can imagine the size of my dog. So yeah, so that's what we're going to do. I've already started this one here, so let's just um, work from this post here. <clears throat> So uh, double crochet into here, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, lost me stitch, six, seven, eight and nine don't forget that that stitch head belongs to that post and then work a half treble around that post okay and then you just do the same again so count them down because it's going to be much easier for you to make sure you're getting it correct because you can get a little bit flummoxed by the wet, by the architecture of your stitches, as I keep saying. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh, eight, nine. And then that's your half treble stitch that post there. <clears throat> so you can see how that works. And obviously as you grow those rows, these, these little bits here will have a nice textured finish and they'll have almost a 3D quality to them, which is really nice. I'm going to stop the video here and we'll catch you back up on the next row on a separate video. So... um seeing as my dogs decide to join the party and be a heavy breather um and i will finish this off and then we will come back to it so there we go so like i say just make sure you're counting one two three four five six seven eight nine and then your half treble around your post and just work it that way at least then you know you're getting the right stitches in for what we've created in the row below um, again, like I say, this is creating the 3D quality, which is really nice. And you just need to work that all the way around. After which we'll be starting on the amethyst row, which will be the next layer of uh, half trebles with a, um, a treble post. So that will continue that row. And then um, we will then be looking at creating the uh, the half trebles the half trebles for the other bits as well so I think we've got another three three rows so uh, yeah so there's quite a bit more to do um, but we're going to try and make it into bite size sections so it's a bit more simple um, for the pattern as well so um, we've got a couple more rows to complete and a uh, front post edge like this one here so we'll probably take it up to there and that'll be chapter two for you so one more video to go and that should be us done on the video side of it so there we go right don't forget as well if you are joining the cal to um make sure you share your photographs if you have any issues please let us know we're more than happy to help you and support you where we can even if it's making a couple of little extra videos to over explain if needs be um to just give you that extra support so it's not going to hurt us to make extra videos because again it helps everybody doesn't it so there we go my lovelies and we will see you shortly <laughs>